morning everybody so welcome to the hottest day in texas history we just installed the fan today and got it plugged in to get some circulation in the greenhouse um this morning it was about 87 percent humidity um it's now 78 so that's kind of normal it's going to dry things out with the fan a little bit more but i got in here early and i watered so Good lord, is it going to be hot today, y'all. Please be careful out there. Um, I got up this morning pretty early, and I got everything watered down. We're doing a farmer's market this weekend. It's going to be scorching. So we're going to be slowing those markets down. As you can see, the greenhouse is looking a little sparse. So we're going to try to get these guys out. I think I have some pretty cool Father's Day presents. Um, but we're working on those things to get these plants to a new home um, and then we can kind of start from scratch and get in the fall when things aren't so blasting hot so yeah this is a uh, central texas hottest day of the year it's crazy crazy hot <clears throat> everything is watered in and Although I'm not a huge advocate for watering things, I don't even have irrigation. Well, I should say I don't have like an irrigation system. I put in like a little uh, drip line that I did for my faucet and I use it when I need it. But, you know, I'm trying to keep things as water wise as possible, especially here in Central Texas. Well, you know, <laughs> who are we kidding? It's not just Texas, it's everywhere. So trying to keep things, you know, water-wise and efficient so we can conserve our precious water resources. Right now, our lake in Lake Travis is so beyond sad. It's just, the level of the lake is just, it's scary, guys. I'm sure wherever you're watching from, you're gonna notice you know your water and your lakes are just going down man not good people so the less we can irrigate the better um but you know I, I hand water i don't know if that's better maybe it is maybe it's not maybe i'm just part of the problem too um but yeah this is uh everything watered in and ready to take on the hottest day in Texas history insanity of course my little pollinator garden over here I don't ever water it I don't there's no reason that's na native um, and that's it does its thing here so right now um, we have some bee balm and coreopsis I mean look at this it's just not beautiful and then sea oats and I don't touch this this is just what would grow here I did add seeds um, we did the ladybird Johnson seed mix but there's some flowers in here that weren't in that mix so the chair is there for anybody who wishes to sit amongst the flowers look at that those are our natives. We're so lucky. And the bee balm, I mean, it's just incredible. The life, I don't know if you can see the bees and there's butterflies. Um, there's some dragonflies. The life is just in this garden. You can feel it. You can literally feel the energy. And if you're quiet enough, you can hear the little wings and the buzzing. Try to get a close up without getting stung. Really? Look at that. It's about 10 o'clock right now in the morning, so they're just getting hit with this beautiful morning sun. I honestly cannot plant this more beautiful. Like, this is, this is God's work, I guess. So, the universe, universe at work. Body. Yesterday I, I got a glimpse of a few and they were just full of pollen 
Their little legs were full of pollen. It was incredible. So I have a lemon tree over here. And if you look closely, this little dude, right there, that's a lightning bug or firefly. So if you see those in your garden, please don't spray them. They're just kind of hanging out and waiting for the night. And then we have a beautiful firefly show at night. We can watch it from our windows. And if you look in, on usually on the stems of your plants, you'll see them. They're kind of weird looking, but, you know, they give us that show at night. And it's just... You know, that comes from having a pesticide, fungicide, weed, um, not weed free, but pesticide free garden. Because I'm not killing them. And those little bug zapper things that kill the mosquitoes, well, guess what? You're killing every other bug that's out at night, like lightning bugs. So please don't use those if you can avoid it. Yeah, we're trying to protect our tomatoes. It's so not pretty to have those shade cloths. I'm gonna have to find a better way, but it's doing its job and we're getting mounds, bowls full of tomatoes. So I'll probably go deliver some of those to the neighbors a little bit later on because we just can't eat them fast enough. And Charlotte's laying in her little place. This is her little area where there's some sandy mud she loves it it's nice and cool like if you touch the mud you like you get it you get why a pig would lay in mud it's very cool and she this is her space so she gets to romp around she doesn't seem <clears throat> excuse me to mess with the artemisia and i think it's because of the smell okay so this is funny see this this is like a random tomato plant more than likely, probably because Charlotte, you see when I call her name, she wiggles her ears, made poop there after she ate tomatoes. So we get random tomato plants all over our yard. It's actually got tomatoes. So, yeah, that's fun. It is actually fun. She's a queen. So she's kind of, you know, making this her own little space. And we allow her to do that because we love her. So, these are some of my cactuses that took a huge beating over the ice storm, but they're coming back. And these are just some more of my little collections. They all seem to be pretty happy, so I'm letting them be. Some of these cactuses, like here, you see it's literally laying on the ground and it's, it's rooted. So, and then there's this Mexican fence post, which I see a snail. I'm gonna pluck that off of there. And yeah, I gotta come in here. That's weird. Do you see that? I have snails all over it. So a little bit later on, I'll just come over and brush them off. And I usually just put them over the fence. I'm not really an advocate of killing animals and it just doesn't feel right. I can't even throw, a, I don't know if you're like this, but I can't even throw uh, cuttings and, and things that I, I get out my garden in the garbage because I feel so bad. So, usually gets composted. If it's diseased, mm, you know, that's a different story. But I haven't had any problems with that as of right now. So yesterday I went ahead and I planted this. This is a Texas Red Star Hibiscus and it hasn't skipped a beat. So I really love the red stems. I think that's really cool. This one looks like it's broken off. So I'll probably go ahead and cut that off and then let that piece pop out. But I think that's going to be really pretty because my hibiscus, my uh, Rose of Sharon's back here are purple and then that's going to be red. And then just beyond the cactuses there, I have my oak leaf hydrania. And it's, it's kind of struggling a little bit. I mean, it just hasn't grown as much as the other ones, but I, 
I think once it gets its feet uh, in the soil and figures out this clay soil, it's gonna it's gonna go. So, yeah. So that's just the overview of our hottest day in Texas, and you can see the sprinklers in my neighbor's yards are going. Um, I have hand watered everything, and I'm not gonna do any more watering everything else is sort of on its own but I think everything got a good drink today and I hope that you were able if you're in the drought and you're experiencing this in Central Texas and I hope you were able to get out and at least focus on your potted plants um, I think that's probably the most important thing um, and then if you can get to the other ones that's great but if not get those potted plants because they have no nowhere to go. Their roots are stuck in there, and I don't know about you, but that would suck for me. Being stuck in a pot with no water, ugh, ugh. So I hope everybody stays hydrated and you get to enjoy this day out in the morning and in an afternoon. And that includes this little lady. So I make sure she comes in. We love her and we don't want her to be out in the full sun because she does and can get sunburn. So we like to protect her little pink skin and make sure she's happy and safe. And again, she has to say goodbye and keep Austin gardening. Thanks for watching guys.